Remember when Christchurch inventor Glenn Martin announced to the world he'd built a jetpack, a one-man flying machine? Well, they mocked him, with one US commentator even challenging him to fly higher than three feet. Now Glenn has had the last laugh. His weird and wonderful flying machine has soared not hundreds, but thousands of feet above the Canterbury Plains. He gives Sunday's Ian Sinclair an exclusive peek. At a secret South Island location, a ground crew prepares a flying machine for takeoff. OK, clear for launch. Clear for launch. For jetpack inventor Glenn Martin, there's a $12 million investment and his reputation at stake. Every now and then you have to say, let's put a stake in the ground. We've done mathematical calculations to show this thing can go up to perhaps 5,000 feet. So I think we're going to sort of try and get to a couple hundred feet and basically play it by ear and see how it goes. And if they want to throw slings and arrows at us afterwards, well, that's, that's going to be the way. Until now, the Martin jetpack has only flown a few feet off the ground. It's off. Today, the plan is to fly far higher than that. Who can forget the fanfare that greeted Glenn Martin's brainchild when it launched three years ago in America? It's a dream come true for many people. Fantastic. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> but ecstasy turned to disappointment at the Oshkosh Air Show when his flying machine would only ground hop. We got all excited today when we heard that there'd be a demonstration of a new invention that would allow we humans to fly. But Glenn's jetpack only got three feet off the ground. Still. We've now got something that you can strap on, you can fly around for up to 30 minutes. Yeah, but Glenn, it's going to have to get higher than three feet. A bit hurtful, was it? Oh, well, of course it was. You know, you spend 28 years of your life developing something. Uh, and I made no claims about it. I didn't say it was the best thing since sliced bread. I just wanted to go to Oshkosh and introduce it to the aviation world. And then all these people come in and start getting negative about it. You know, that was very hurtful. But Make you more determined? It does. It just makes you more determined. And that's be the same. That so determination's carried Glenn since his first flight of fancy 30 years ago. His question, whatever happened to the jetpack? Could he build one bigger and better than that rocket belt we saw in the movies? I thought, well, well why not? Let's have a look at it and see if we can do something about it. After tinkering in his garden shed for 23 years, Glenn emerged with the answer. It is a fun machine, you know, it still is a lot of fun, but what we're discovering now, it's got a serious uh, use as well. You can get into places you can't go, you can use it for search and rescue operations that you couldn't do in a helicopter. We're going to strap you into the machine. Are you sure this is a good idea? Three years ago, Glenn and his wife Vanessa let Sunday in on the secret. We even got to try it out. Don't look down. And don't look down. I'm going to stand out there. Funny and that. And you're, and you're, and you're Up till now, Glenn has deliberately kept his machine on a tight leash, no soaring, whatever the temptation. One death and it'd be all over for you, wouldn't it? Oh, of course. And, and, and not only that, you know, it's a personal thing, it's a moral thing. And, and uh, you know, I can't uh, put out some of the nest. We've all done our best to make sure it's as safe as it possibly can be. So, till now, it's only flown at low level. But finally, Glenn is ready to let it loose and fly with the birds. Is a little bit of the old, I told you so, in this? Oh, of course. You know, I mean, we, we get people coming into the website writing silly emails, you know, accusing us that it's all fake photography. And, and you know, obviously, it'd be nice to, to make them eat their words. But there's a twist. He'll be testing the first parachute on a jetpack, aimed at bringing the machine down in case of engine failure. Then there's George. This is our, our weighted dummy, George Jetson. So he doesn't really fly it. One of our pilots will fly it remotely controlled. Of course, there are always people that are going to say, Glenn, heck yeah, but it only flew with a dummy. That's hardly the same as a person. Oh, absolutely, and I feel the same way myself, so I exactly know how they feel. Uh, but we have to do the dummy first and then we'll do the person second. I mean, this is going to be very safe. We've got a crash test dummy. There's no way we're going to hurt a person, but we may, may embarrass it ourselves in front of your cameras if it all goes wrong. Dawn. Somewhere in the South Island. 
And Glenn Martin is finally ready to prove his critics wrong. We're going to be doing many things that we've never done before and also many things that nobody else has ever done before. If you look at the history of jetpacks, no jetpack, whether it's manned or unmanned, you know, will go, has been higher than about 150 feet. Uh, and obviously we'd like to do that, and a lot higher than that. Uh, nobody's ever fired a parachute from a, a jetpack before. Coming down, you know, if we've got those calculations wrong, it could start tumbling. Are you nervous? Very nervous. <laughs> nervous anyone? God, I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Glenn can afford to be, but James Bowker can't. As pilot, James needs a steady hand on the remote controls. For us it's important because it, it verifies you know, that our parachute will work, it verifies we can go up high and um, you know, it'll let the public know that if the engine does fail, you're not just going to fall to your death. That's if everything works, but it turns out that if the parachute conks out, there could be a few worries for us as well. The machine would drop like a stone. It weighs 250 odd pounds, and so if it's falling under gravity, then that's going to make a big hole. Don't be underneath it. Does anyone have any questions? Glenn's jetpack has been three long decades in the making, but it'll take him just a few minutes to find the answer to the ultimate question. Is it really a flying machine, or is it back to the drawing board? For Glenn and his team, on the ground and in the air, the moment of truth has arrived. Clear for take okay, off. Final check. Final Ground check. commander happy with a thumb? I'm happy and uh, we're ready to go. Okay, go for launch. Go for launch. And it's off. Coming up quick. Eight hundred feet per minute. Two thousand feet. That's you know that's as high as the sky tower now. I can't hardly see it. It's so small. If it goes to full altitude, I think it'll just completely disappear. Three and a half thousand feet. Unbelievable. Five thousand feet above sea level. Glenn hopes proof that his dream machine can fly like this will bring more investment and ultimately mass production. We certainly need to raise money. It's always been my personal vision that we would float on a share market at some stage. Uh, but the company, is, as the company, we haven't made that decision yet. But first, he has to prove a pilot can parachute down safely if it does conk out. Oh, it goes. And it went perfectly. Look at that. So this is its rocket deployed parachute. So effectively it's like airbag technology. It can pop out with a little explosive charge very, very quickly. And it's touchdown in a car paddock. In my wildest dream, I never thought that, that everything would work as well as that did. No. The impact leaving just a scuff on the grass, with only superficial damage to the jetpack and George, the crash test dummy. Proving an emergency descent from thousands of feet up is survivable. We've got to analyse all our data and, uh, and you know, get out there and start doing some more flying. Right. With people in it this time. So, Glenn, what's your message to that guy who said, Glenn, it's got to go higher than three feet? Well, I certainly did. Well, that was uh, over a thousand times higher than three feet, wasn't it? Good on you, Glenn. Uh, believe it or not, the jetpack doesn't need rocket fuel. It runs on petrol, and you can fill it up at the surface.